Hey guys, so we're moving on to question two now, okay? So this table one in Annex should be shows data relating to the imports of personal care and cosmetic products in Australia for the period 2013 to 2015. So again, remember, we have this Annex to make sure that you know where it is and that you understand the information that's being displayed. Don't spend too much time trying to understand it because often the questions help you understand the scenario. Okay, so I'm just showing you this here. Then it says, okay, determine missing value A rounded off to a whole percentage using the following formula, okay? So this missing value A is over here. Okay, let's just use it. There's a highlighter. So A is over there. So the A is the change from 2013 to 2015, okay? And they've given, this, uh, given us this nice formula. So let's just write this down, 2.1.1 A. Okay, so percentage change for A equals the imports, right, the imports in 2015, so it's going to be this 216329, okay, so that's what it says over here, 2015 imports, so I've got the 2015 imports, minus the 2013 imports, 2013 is this 227665, okay, all over the... 2013 inputs times by 100. Okay, so 227665 times by 100. Okay, so if we put that into our calculator, 216329 minus 227665 over 227665 times by 100. Okay, and that gives me negative 4.9792, etc. percent. But what did the question ask us? It says, round it off to the nearest whole percentage. So we're going to round that off to negative 5%. Okay, it's important in these questions to make sure you put your answer in the format that they've asked you to, because there's generally a mark allocated towards that. Okay, then it says, determine the median of the percentage change for the period 2013 to 2015, the median, okay? So what we have to do here, right, is basically the median of all these numbers. Now, in order to get the median, you have to order the data, right? You have to go from the smallest to the biggest and find the middle point, okay? So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to order all these points to figure out what is the median percentage change, okay? So, Let's do that. Okay, our smallest, our smallest thing that we have here, I'm just going to put it like this so you can see. I'm going to say 2.1.1B. Okay, so let's write this out here. Okay, our smallest is negative 12. So we go from negative 12. So I'm just going to tick it off as we go. We have, we know that A is negative 5. Then we're going to have negative 2, negative 1. Okay, let's see. So we've done 2, done 1. So then we have 0. Then we have 2. Then we have 5. Okay, so I'm just putting them in order. Okay, then we have, let's see what we have next. 10, I think. So then we have 10. Then we have 13. Okay, then we have another 13. Then we have mm, 16, 18, 19, 40. Okay, so let's just count how many there are there. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've done all of them. So the median means the middle number. Okay, so the middle of this is going to be between 7 or 8, right? Because I can count here, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's the middle going from that side um, of the order, right? And here we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So we know that the median sits between these two numbers, right? So we're going to have to 
figure that what the median is. And because we have an even amount of numbers, it means we're going to have to add these two together, divide it by two, and that's going to give us our middle number, right? If there was an odd number of data points, then there'd only be one number that sits in the middle. But because we've got even, we've got 14 points, we have to go to seven on this side, seven from that side. We say five plus, so we see the median, the middle number is between five and 10. So we can divide by two. So it's gonna be 7.5%, okay? So it's important here to recognize, firstly, we have to order the numbers. Obviously, when we write that, I want you to write out those ordered numbers, right? It's important because you'll get a mark for that. Then I want you to identify that there's 14 of them, which means that there isn't just a clear middle number. It means that there'll be two numbers that are in the middle. Find what that, those two middle numbers are. So we said 14 divided by two gives us seven. And then you say, okay, it would be seven and the one bigger than seven. So it's going to be between the terms seven and eight if we're just counting each of these terms individually. So we said five plus 10 divided by two and that gives us our median. Okay, this question is sometimes a little bit, um, stats are sometimes a little bit difficult to access, but it's literally saying, if I order all my data from smallest to biggest, what is my middle value? Okay, important to remember that. Okay, let's now move on to 2.1.2. So, it says, describe the trend in the imports of makeup and skincare products. Okay, let's find, there's makeup and skincare products. So, we see that each year, it's going up. Do you see there? It goes from 590, 633, 668. So you can just say, um, as the years um, go, right, the makeup, uh, what did they say? It was M -M -M -C -M -S -C, makeup and skincare increases. Okay. So basically, as you move along in the years, the makeup and skincare products, the amount that we spend on them increases, or the value of the imports increases. Okay, perfect. Let's now go on to 2.1.3. Let me just write that down. Okay, 2.1.3 says, the negative value of the percentage change does not necessarily imply that the import value of the products decreased continuously over the three periods. Name two products, um, two different products in the table and explain how they support the statements above. So let's look at these, right? So for example, right, we see that you, we have over here, we have a negative, right? But here we have a positive, right? So the percentage share of 2015 imports, wait, 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 let's just make sure we understand the question again. There's the negative value of the percentage change does not necessarily imply that the import value of the products decreased continuously over the three-year period. Okay, so let's go to some of our negatives. Let's just find some of the negatives because that's what we're talking about here. So let's find these negatives and then A is also a negative. Okay, so do you see here, it went down every year. So there it does imply where this negative 2% is like, it does decrease every year. But then over here for this negative 12, you see it decreases and then it actually increases. It goes from 310 to 311. So just because it went from negative 12% over the three years doesn't mean that every single year decreased. It just means it's 12% on average, okay, over that period. Okay, so let's also see here. Um, you see here it went from 31 to 37, so it increased and then it decreased again, right? So that shows you that this percentage here, this, this percentage change over the th three-year period doesn't mean that it decreased every year by that amount. It's just saying over that whole period, how much did it decrease by? Okay, and that's important because you can have changes or differences in different data points, but this is a summary statistic, okay? But a summary doesn't always capture all the detail, right? Whereas these points capture all the detail, okay? So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say, we can say fragrances, okay? So what are our different um, uh, categories because what did it ask us to do it said name two different products in table one and explain how they support the statement okay so we can say fragrances so fr right and perfumes okay so you can say here um from 2013 to 2014 it actually went up and then from 2014 to 2015 it went down 
okay, for perfumes. I mean, for fragrances, right? For perfumes, right, from 2013 to 2014, it went down. But then from 2014 to 2015, it went up, right? So it didn't always display a negative trend. So um, does, oh, sorry, does not always show negative trend. Okay. So that's important, okay? It shows you that these are summary statistics. This is the actual um, yearly event that happened, okay? It's an important thing with statistics that so often they are summaries of more detailed data, okay? Let's now move on to 2.1.4. So 2.1.4 says, state with a reason whether the data in table one can be represented using a single pie chart. A single pie chart, that's important. Right? Do you think we can put all of this into a pie chart? I'm thinking no. The reason being is that these don't all add up to 100%, right? There's too many different years. Um, it just, it becomes quite confusing, right? So I would definitely say no, right? So I'd say no. And you can use numerous reasons here, right? So you can say percentages um, do not add up to 100% because remember we need that for a pie chart right and what is it saying a pie chart of it said whether the data in table one can be shown in a summary in in one pie chart so you can say no the, the there's also negative values which are difficult to indicate right how do you put a negative 12% onto a onto a, a pie chart like how do you even show that right there's also too many columns and and um, years and all that sort of stuff here. This is not easy to put in a pie chart, right? So there's lots of reasons here, but it's just they're wanting to to see whether you can indicate when it would be good to use a pie chart, okay? So you can, there's lots of different reasons here. You can look in the memo at those reasons. I'm just giving you sort of like the most obvious ones now. Okay. So let's now move on to 2.1.5, which is actually the last question for this video, okay? So it says... A line graph showing the percentage share, let me see if you can see this, of 2015 imports for the first eight, that's important, eight products in the table has been drawn on the answer sheet. On the same grid, draw another line representing the percentage change from the period 2013 to 2015 for the first eight. So it's basically saying that these eight, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, these eight have been represented. And it wants us to put these eight onto the graph. Okay, so let's go look at what the graph looks like. I think it's at the back here. Yeah? I hope it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So do you see here this goes from it goes from 2 to 1.25. So it's all these different points and it ends at 8.95. So it's literally this line here, and I'm just gonna quickly trace it in color so that you can follow. Okay, right, that line there is this data here, these first eight things. So what we're going to do is we're now going to use, I'm going to get an orange highlighter just to help us. Oh, my orange highlighter is hiding. Okay, I'm going to use the orange highlighters to do these eight terms. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Our first point is 40. So it's going to be 40. Our next point is negative 1. Negative 12. So just make sure that you're keeping this sort of as to scale as possible. So each of these little intersections here count for two, right? So it goes two, four, six, wait, sorry. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. That should be a little bit higher then. So that's two, well, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative 10. So that's actually up there. That's fine over there. Okay. So just make sure that you're making it as much to scale as possible. Then we go to positive 13. So positive 13 is going to probably be somewhere over here. Um, then we have zero. Okay, make sure that you are, make sure they correlate, right? So hair care is definitely zero, so we're doing fine. Then it goes to 16. Okay, then it goes to negative two, so that's gonna be sitting here. And then the last one, which is S, Right, is going to be 13. So it's going to go back up. That's 10. It's going to be over here. Okay. 
So it's kind of like a weird shape going on here. So I'm just going to get a ruler just to help me connect all these dots. Okay. So literally all it's doing is it's saying, okay, put your data into, oh goodness, I didn't draw that very nicely. Um, put it into a visual form. Okay. So literally what I've done is I've just plotted points. Okay. So it's important that you're comfortable with accessing data and representing it in graph form. Because literally all I did is I took what was in the graph and I plotted it onto this graph here. Okay. Importantly, always put your examination number, etc. But that is all we need to do for 2.1.5. Okay. And that is the end of this question. Okay. So that is that. We will then now do the second half of question two. I hope that was helpful. It's all about stats. You just need to go about it very methodically. Okay. Cheers, guys.